The Apple iPhone 7 series was considered to be a massive step forward in terms of the camera setup. However, despite all the improvements and addition of a telephoto lens on the Plus variant, the camera improvements felt half-baked at times due to the issues with dynamic range and low-light performance. This year, Apple has decided to improve on its processing and also provide new sensors which seem identical spec-wise but brings improvements to the overall photography and videography game. Let's see how it fares. The iPhone 8 and 8 Plus have primary 12MP camera at the back with f1.8 aperture, OIS, 1.25 micron pixel size and a focal length of 26mm. The added advantage of the Plus model is a secondary telephoto camera that offers 2x focal length of 52mm as well as f2.6 aperture and 1 micron pixel size. The camera module sits behind sapphire crystal glass that seems to do fine so far in terms of protection and we haven't gotten any scratches yet on our unit. The sensors are still Exmor RS from Sony but are new and are bundled with a new image processor, processing algorithm as well as a new A11 Bionic chipset that does wonders. Coming to the image quality, the wide-angle camera has improved by a huge margin. Apple has improved the sharpness and detail resolved by a large margin and perhaps the biggest advantage now is the improved dynamic range. Apple seems to be using a more laid-back 3 exposures for HDR instead of the 9 or something similar that Samsung and Pixel has done but the results are somewhat similar. It has come a long way even since the iPhone 7. The low-light performance too is much better. Earlier, photos used to lose out on a lot of detail in low light but that has been rectified to a large extent now. Images have more noise than before, not by a big margin, but on the flip side, you're getting more details in images even in low light. Colors are really beautiful and one of the most accurate we've seen on any smartphone currently. Autofocus is fast and accurate and the OIS works really well to provide a stable shot. Coming to a telephoto camera, the story again remains the same. The detailing is impressive and the dynamic range is much improved as well and perhaps it's more evident on the telephoto camera than the wide-angle camera. In wireless situations, both provide nearly the same level of image quality, however things do go south under low light considering the smaller f2.6 aperture and the lens doesn't have OIS this time around either. That is reserved only for the big iPhone X. In fact, if you use the telephoto effect during a low-light situation and the lighting is deemed to be too low, the 8 Plus takes a photo with the main camera and crops in later to get the 2x zoom. Our advice would be to just capture with the main camera in low-light and then crop if desired. Portrait mode is still here on the 8 Plus thanks to a telephoto lens. It applies a blurring algorithm to the out-of-focus area and produces some stunning results. Apple still has one of the best blurring algorithms on the market when it comes to portrait mode and this time around they've included additional portrait lighting effects too which is still in beta mode. However, the same can't be said about the algorithm of the portrait lighting as it's far from perfect. Especially in the stage light modes, it easily messes up and leaves out portions of your face or body. We feel that Apple could make it better by decreasing the drama and including a darker but still visible portion of the background as well. Because now the stage light effect seems more like versions of people that you cut out from a photo using Photoshop. The effects of studio light and contour light are a little less pronounced and are more usable at this point of time. Apple will definitely improve the algorithm over the coming months and like they perfected the portrait mode, the portrait lighting mode should also become the industry standard soon. The A can take some beautiful looking panoramas and the detail is splendid as well. There are no stitching artifacts either unless you choose to capture moving objects in the frame and even the telephoto camera supports panoramas which is something that could come in handy especially for those who love to capture large landscapes in panorama mode. Thanks to the 11 Bionic, the iPhone 8 and iPhone 10 devices are the first in the smartphone industry to achieve 4K recording at 60fps. Videos have amazing stabilization and is one of the best implementations that we've seen on a smartphone recently. The overall detailing and colors are really impressive too and remains quite close to what you would get from the photos itself. 4K60 takes some brilliantly smooth videos, however the shakes are a bit more apparent than that of the 30fps mode and overall dynamic range and brightness drops down a bit as well. So in lesser list situations, you may want to use 4K 30fps mode. The S.265 codec supports videos with nearly half the bitrate and size while providing the same level of output and detail. The main issue with video recording however is the audio which is still mono and is miles behind the likes of Nokia 8 or HTC U11 or the LG V30. Would be good if Apple paid attention to the acoustics as much as it did to the visuals. The telephoto camera is really impressive in terms of video too when there is sufficient light and also manages to do all the various permutations and combinations including 4K 60fps. Even though it lacks OIS, Apple still stabilizes the video from the telephoto camera using EIS. 
Slow motion videos are one of the best we've seen in terms of bitrate and detail resolve. In fact, it can also record 1080p videos at 240fps using the telephoto camera, which is also equally impressive when there is sufficient light. The front facing camera remains the same 7 megapixel unit from the previous generation with f2.2 aperture and might be the only thing that doesn't really get any much improvements. Image quality is good but it really isn't class leading and the video shot on the front camera too lacks stabilization but make up for it in terms of detail as well as the overall sharpness and colors. So this is the video on the iPhone 8 plus front camera. So let me know what you guys think about the overall stabilization, the sharpness, the colors, the dynamic range etc and how it stays in focus as well as the overall audio. I am in a busy street right now but my audio is supposed to come really crisp and clear even with the busyness around so let me know how that is as well. It is important to note that if you want to capture photos and videos at the best quality possible to make sure and head into your settings and choose high efficiency mode which captures photos in the HEIF format and videos using the new H.265 HEVC format. By default the phone is set to this but you also have the option of going for a mode called most compatible which would use a regular JPEG format for photos as well as H.264 format for videos. However, you won't be able to capture 4K60 nor 1080p slow motion videos at 240fps in this mode. The main advantage you get from the high efficiency mode is the smaller file size which is around half especially in terms of a regular JPEG. It's also important to mention that you do get the new HEIF and H.265 formats if you share within iOS or transfer over USB on a Mac OS High Sierra device. However, if you transfer over USB on any other device, it converts it into JPEG and H.264 formats automatically and in real time, so you wouldn't even know that is happening. The camera UI remains pretty much the same aside from the new portrait lighting effects and that's an issue especially for Android users who are fiddling with quality and modes on the fly. Anything related to resolution or frame rate means you need to dig into the phone settings in order to change it rather than housed within the camera UI itself. iOS users may feel at home but Android users will get annoyed by this. One pro tip would be to turn off auto HDR in the settings which would enable an HDR shortcut within the camera UI and one you can choose to leave on auto or toggle between on and off. You can also ask the phone to save both HDR and non HDR photos at the same time and choose what to use later. Apple has truly rethought their camera this time around by combining good processing with better hardware. It's one of the best all round experiences along with the likes of the Galaxy Note 8 and it does have a very unique feature in being able to capture 4K at 60fps along with one of the best video stabilizations currently. It fixes most of the issues the previous generation had including the dynamic range, detailing and offers high quality outputs with really efficient file sizes. We'll be comparing the phone to its fiercest rival, the Galaxy Note 8 in terms of camera pretty soon, so do stay tuned for that. As always, thanks for watching this video and see you again in the next one. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to get the latest updates from us. Thanks for watching this video, see you again in the next one.